Hey guys, look right here and welcome back to another Clash Royale video. Now today I've got a very special video for you guys. I have my friend Aaron on the channel once again and he's actually pushed up to number three in the entire world right now with 2.9 motorcycle. He is doing absolutely insane this season and as a whole, motorcycle is honestly doing a lot better in this current meta and it hasn't seen this much dominance in a long, long time. So of course today, we're going to be going over a couple of matches that took him up to this insanely high trophy count and showcasing exactly how he plays different matchups. Huge thanks to Aaron. Of course, I will leave his YouTube and Twitter down below for you guys to see some even more amazing motorcycle gameplay. And while you're down there, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support me and help me make even more high quality videos. Also, if you'd like to support me, feel free to use code LEGENDARAY in the shop. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some matches. Alrighty, so this match here is going to be against a Lava Hound player. Lava Loon specifically, Aaron's going to be on the top in this replay. And starting off, you can see, of course, he is going to be cycling some of his cards. Now, Lava Hound, as usual, I always say this is an insanely difficult matchup. And you play it in a very peculiar way. And so you can see here, starting off, he goes in with a Knight at the Bridge. I noticed that I do this quite a bit as well against Lava Hound matchups. Because many Lava Hound decks don't have ground answers, simply playing a Knight at the Bridge can uh, require a bit more of a response from the opponent. In this case, however, Tombstone does manage to take the stuff out, but Aaron gets a mortar in the opposite lane here. And you'll notice that, you know, he's simply able to rocket out this Lava Hound push in the left lane. And on the other side, the mortar's just doing so much damage. And it does, I think, over a thousand damage on the tower. While his uh, Lava Hound push on the left lane gets just completely wiped out. So very, very good start there. And uh, especially against Lava Hound, you're going to almost want to play the game picture perfectly in order to try and pull off a win. So here again, the opponent is going to play down another Tombstone. And the Tombstone variant is honestly quite annoying for Mortar to deal with just because the Skeleton spawns so quickly and the Mortar shots just get distracted over and over again. So Lava Hound down in the very back. Of course, Aaron's going to play those archers as the first play uh, on the defense in order to cycle to a second set. Now he's going to, I believe, go in with a log. Yep, takes down that tombstone. And then, of course, barbarians will come down from the opponent, ruining any hopes for a mortar. So here, uh, Aaron actually goes in with a rocket onto just the mega minion and the barbarian. I notice he's a lot more aggressive with his defensive rockets. And you can see here, it definitely pays off. Those Barbarians on the left lane are going to do a little bit of damage, but you can see here, a Center Planet Mortar kind of does double duty here, not only distracting the Balloon, but also uh, basically guaranteeing a shot onto the tower. So now, 60 seconds left, Aaron goes in with a Knight push at the bridge. As you can see, again, forcing out quite a bit of expenditure from the opponent, while also helping him cycle back to another Mortar. Of course, he goes ahead and will play that Mortar down, uh, followed up with a log as well which will clear out the skeletons and allow the mortar to take down that tombstone now the opponent plays a balloon we're just gonna cycle some archers try and take that out as soon as possible and the mortar actually gets a hit onto the tower which is actually insane and in the meanwhile you can see Aaron is completely in the driver's seat of this match he is totally on the offensive end another mortar comes down and the opponent simply is not even able to build up a push of his own barbarians come down which get logged out skeletons and archers will pretty much take out all of his distracting units there and although those Barbarians will pretty much distract the entirety of that Mortar, uh, I mean, he, you can see the offensive pressure is still there, and uh, immediately a second Mortar comes right down. So Barbarians come down, unfortunately, to distract that Mortar, but you can see here that the opponent simply does not even have any opportunity to begin building up an offensive push. Mortar comes down again, and I mean, it's just a rinse and repeat at this point, right? Archers and a knight to tank. Uh, log there is going to destroy that tombstone, and that's going to guarantee one more mortar hit onto the tower. And when, with this mortar deck, it is more focused on getting chip damage over and over again, so even one hit is very, very good. And here he does an extremely clutch play, one of my favorite plays with mortar cycle, and that is a predictive NATO tornadoing those barbarians out of range of that mortar. So here, 
Uh, balloon push coming in, no big deal. We're just gonna rocket that out of the way. Uh, Ice Spear comes down as well as going to uh, finish the rest of that off. Meanwhile here, he's going to tornado that tombstone away, which is a play that I've never actually thought of doing, but that does get him one more mortal lock to the tower. Tower is within spell cycle range. One rocket down, GG well played. Taking down Lava Hound, no big deal. Alrighty, so this next match here going to be against Cody Go, uh, who actually played in Clash Royale League. Uh, so obviously he's very, very good at this game. Now he's going to be playing Minor Wallbreaker Cycle, which is actually quite a difficult matchup for Mortar Cycle because they are actually able to keep up with your tower damage. You do have obviously the Rocket, which does a lot more damage than any of his other spells, but because he's able to constantly chip away with the Miner as well as the Fireball, he does have ways to actually let himself catch up on damage. So starting off here, um, Mortar down will actually distract two wall breakers, got a little bit lucky with that interaction, and that also gets him a mortar shot on to the tower. Knight in the back, we're just going to mirror that play there, not that big of a deal. And uh, of course, he's gonna try and catch that miner again with skeletons first, and then a set of archers as well. Uh, you, you really want to stop all minor damage when you are against this matchup. And here's another big play: you're always going to want to save your log for the wall breakers. This is going to be very, very essential. Um, and you can see later how the log is pretty much going to be the most important card when you are playing against this deck. So now Aaron goes in on offense, but um, really the goal against a minor matchup is not to get more shots onto the tower because the opponent also is playing a cycle deck so they'll pretty much always have a mortar counter in hand and the goal here instead is you're going to want to try and get uh, rocket damage onto the tower. And here you can see Log not only retargets the miner, but also destroys the wall breakers and brings them down into one hit. That's why Log is so valuable in this defense. And uh, anyways here, uh, Mortar is actually going to retarget onto that one Spear Goblin, and that's going to be another Mortar Lock on the tower for Aaron. Very, very good start. That's going to be a second Mortar hit there. Does it get a third? No, it does not, but still very, very good start going into Double Elixir, especially since we can now begin the Rocket Cycle. So, of course, Rocket goes in. Opponent's gonna immediately go in with a Miner here, and a Knight comes down, fails to catch it, but you can see an Ice Spirit Log clears out the uh, Wall Breakers there, and meanwhile, he gets himself a King Tower activation with that Tornado. Very solid defense. Personally, I think I would have logged first, but obviously Aaron's, you know, number three in the world, so <laughs> who am I to say? Um, second Rocket it comes down here uh, of course, just to start the spell cycle, Miner and some Skeletons predict the Miner very effectively. Nato as well clears out the Spear Goblins and brings those Wall Breakers down into Log range. And you can see here that we are a comfortable 5-600 damage ahead of our opponents here. So of course, we're going to just focus up on defending here because the opponent is back to another Miner and you don't want to get too aggressive with this deck. So of course, Miner goes down in the back. He does catch it, but a predictive fireball gets even more value. And so Aaron just goes in with a defense and mortar, and that's going to do most of the tankage there. But you have a lot of options to defend those wall breakers. The mortar there, as you saw, it wasn't really to get hits onto the tower, but it was still very, very effective nonetheless. Anyways here, going to NATO those wall breakers back. Skeletons down will also finish the wall breakers as well. And you can see there's just so many ways for you to creatively deal with those wall breakers even when you are in a pinch and don't have your ideal counters in cycle. Anyways, now at this point we're just two rocket cycles away from winning the entire match. So of course just focus up on defending this one last push. Again, log there on that defense, retargeted the miner off of the tower and took those wall breakers down to one hit, doing just basically double duty there, which is very, very nice. Uh, of course, Ice Spirit down is going to, uh, Skeletons down, I mean, do catch the Miner and Ice Spirit as well, help reset it a little bit. Well, uh, Log down is going to help chip onto the tower as well. 594 is well within spell cycle range. So, of course, the second, uh, second rocket comes down, and then a Tornado is more than enough to finish that tower off. So, as you can see, nice and smooth match against a Miner cycle deck, which is honestly one of the most popular decks in the current game right now. Alrighty, so next up we're going to be against a bait matchup. Now speaking of popular decks, bait is definitely one of the most popular decks in this current game. So you're definitely going to want to know how to take down this matchup. Now in general, bait is going to be a good matchup. Obviously you have so many counters for bait, log, tornado, you can get an easy king tower activation. 
and you can also rocket cycle. But the only saving grace for bait is that they have uh, multiple options to actually get ahead of your spell cycle. The first is obviously they also have a rocket and they also have a fast cycle, so they can keep up with your rocket cycle. And the saving grace for bait is that they can princess snipe at the bridge, as you can see right here. Basically, a guaranteed shot on the tower unless you're able to predict it. So. Anyways here, as you can see, Aaron is very, very careful. The opponent's obviously super smart. He knows that we are running the tornado, so he's sending the goblin barrels in positions where it's very difficult to get king tower activations. Uh, but anyways here, Mortar comes down here, uh, knight down as well. Archers to predict an inferno tower, and that actually forces out a rocket from the opponent. And now that the opponent's rocket is out of cycle, Obviously, we can go in with a rocket as well. I'm trying to see if that's exactly what he does here, but it's looking like he actually chooses not to rocket. Um, or, oh no, he actually does. Never mind. Um, we're totally fine here. And the opponent probably wants the princess at the bridge here. So I'm guessing once he reaches 10, that's exactly what he's going to do. Unfortunately, Aaron does not predict it, but he's able to react quick enough with the knights. Does take two princess hits as well, uh, unfortunately, but he does get another uh, big mortar push coming down. Mortar actually locks onto the tower, and that's going to be a couple of hundred guaranteed damage there onto the tower, which is definitely pretty nice. Inferno Tower comes down pretty late mortar already gets like two hits onto the tower which is i think six seven hundred damage which is definitely really really nice this time the opponent does uh this time aaron actually predicts the princess uh ice spirit down to distract followed up by archers are able to stop any and all chip damage onto the tower and now it's just time to rocket cycle right goblin bear comes down we just simply log that out no big deal and now we're so far ahead in terms of damage that we pretty much have this game sealed and in, in the back defensive mortar comes down no more princess sniping abilities and while the opponent is, you know, trying to rocket cycle and catch up, we're essentially a full rocket ahead at this point. So there's almost no coming back from this, right? So, you know, Goblin Bear comes down, we obviously just log that thing out of existence. The opponent is cycling pretty quickly here, so we do have to be a little bit careful. But, uh, you know, we're just, you know, cycling all of our spells onto the tower, getting as much chip damage as possible. Two rockets, and the game is pretty much over. One rocket comes down, uh, and you can see here, we're going to, I think, just log here the princess as well as the goblin gang. Never mind, archers come down here. Uh, he needs to get a little more, yeah, as you can see, log comes down. Goblin barrel is going to come in. But we, of course, have the tornado to counter that pretty easily. King Tower activation comes in, and we do predict that princess, but it's a little bit too late. All we need to do is send in a rocket, but we do have to spend one more goblin barrel. Skeletons come down, do a decent job, and then a simple log rocket is going to finish that tower nice and easily. Very, very comfortable victory. You can see there how Aaron was able to stay in control because we just had so many answers to all of those bait cards. Alrighty, next up we're going to be facing another Lava Hound deck, but this time we're going to be facing a Lava Hound control deck because it doesn't have the balloon and it focuses on breaking through with more support units. Starting off, the opponent goes in with a Goblin Cage. Goblin Cage, I like facing it uh, just because it's essentially a free King Tower activation at the start of the match. As you can see, this is exactly what I would have done as well. Mortared opposite lane and then just, you know, nated that Goblin Brawler to the King Tower. Pretty easy start to the match. Meanwhile, Knight Skeletons are going to do a great job distracting that inferno dragon and you can see king tower activation there nice and easily not that big of a deal so yeah anyways mega mini here the opponent actually lava hounds at the bridge which is a very interesting move and uh, you can see here aaron's just gonna go ahead and rocket that push out since he knows that the opponent played the lava hound at the bridge that means that the opponent had at most three elixir in his hand so rocketing out that uh mega minion there was definitely a good decision as you can see he's going to deal with that push relatively easily back to another mortar and he's going to play it on offense in the opposite lane uh inferno dragon comes down and uh yeah aaron's just going to get an ice spirit down that's going to allow one more mortar shot onto the tower for about 600 or so damage and then skeletons down uh will finish the job distracting that inferno so yeah, pretty even start to be honest. Uh, we're about even on damage on both towers right there. Goblin Cage comes down, and now Aaron, I believe, is going to split his archers in the back. I actually am not too against splitting your archers in the back against this matchup because more often than not, again, the goal of any defense is to cycle to two sets of archers, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Now, Mortar comes down opposite lane, applies even more pressure, and forces the opponent to split up some of his push. You can see here the Mortar locks onto the tower in the left lane here 
and the opponent actually chooses to ignore it, uh, which is definitely an interesting decision. But you can see here, Miner comes down. We're just going to distract everything a little bit here. Cycle to some archers, get a knight down to do some final tanking and group all those units up. And then one last rocket is going to pretty much demolish that entire push. And you can see the mortar in the left lane has been doing damage the entire time. And now you can see Aaron with an 800 damage lead against Lavahound. Mortar comes down again. The opponent has no ground answers in cycle. And the mortar is going to just solo that entire left tower. Uh, the opponent's going to sack it and just go opposite lane. So now Aaron cycles archers first play. Again, very, very crucial uh, because the opponent definitely has ways to take those archers out and you want to be able to cycle to more archers. Miner comes down, fireballs out those archers immediately, but a second pair of archers comes down and that's just going to completely tear apart this Lava Hound push. Rocket's going to clear the Inferno Dragon. NATO plus Ice Spirit's going to clear the Lava Pups and you can see here with six seconds left, he just shoves a mortar into the opponent's face no way the lockdown's even going to reach the tower and that's another gg well played against one of the most difficult matchups for mortar cycle all right, next up, we're going to be against a 2.9 Expo Cycle deck. Now, Expo Cycle is generally going to be a good matchup for Mortar Cycle. The reason is because we have the Rocket, which can pretty much solo now an entire Expo due to its recent HP nerf. In addition to that, in Triple Elixir, we're going to be able to counter the Expo without using the Rocket, and then we can just focus on Rocket Cycling the opponent's tower. So anyways here, you can see just some passive cycling at the start. Aaron goes in with a Mortar. He knows it's not going to break through. There's almost no way you're going to get a single Mortar lock on the tower uh, when you're against Expo, and that's simply just a fact you're going to have to live with. Um, so again, most of your damage is going to be coming from the Rockets, as well as the Log Chip damage onto the tower. Anyways, Ice Spirit right into a log kind of unlucky there but you can see both players are just cycling their cards rocket comes down and he goes in here with a knight and then a rocket finishes off that expo nice and easily he actually waits a little bit on that rocket I, i'm pretty sure he's waiting to see if the opponent will like support the expo with something and then he'll get like even more rocket value but the opponent doesn't bite so pretty good move on his end and um yeah, essentially for, you know, all of regular time and for like the first minute or so of overtime, this is essentially what you're going to be doing over and over again. Just keeping up with the opponent's cycle, going in with rockets onto the expo and stopping all damage whatsoever. Anyways, as you can see here, again, just some passive cycling once again. Archer's down to stop some damage right there. And I mean, honestly, not very exciting. The game obviously becomes a lot more exciting once you reach double elixir time. But as you can see again, Expo comes down, Rocket immediately takes that out. Anyways, now as we head towards double elixir time, the match is going to get a little bit more interesting because we're going to start taking more risks to get more spell damage onto the opponent's tower. So 60 seconds left, Mortar comes down. Note how he plays it towards the front of the tower. That's going to uh, allow the blind range to uh, extend a little bit forward. And here you can see the opponent actually misplaces Tesla there. Uh, so a smart NATO there is going to destroy all the distracting units and Aaron actually gets a mortar shot onto the tower so pretty good here and note this mortar placement against expo you're going to want to utilize a good amount of defensive expos in double elixir and when you play it you're going to want to play it in the anti-fireball position which is three tiles from the bridge towards your healthier tower anyways here you can see aaron getting any chip damage he can and now the opponent's just trying to cycle to some stuff he starts a fireball cycle so we're going to uh just kind of double down on our defense here so here this is another important uh note in the match as soon as your opponent plays a defensive expo you just rocket onto the tower because um, what, it's basically the same as rocketing an offensive expo, right? We can keep up with the cycle of the expo player, so why not just rocket there? His expo's out of cycle, and we can just cycle back to another rocket like so. You can see second expo comes down, immediately night rocket, no big deal, entire push just gets destroyed on the spot. And uh, yeah, and at this point we're 600 damage, 700 damage ahead, uh, so very, very comfortable position for the mortar cycle player. There's almost no way the expo player will break through. Another defensive expo comes down honestly quite well played but you can see here Aaron actually nados the ice golem backwards so that the mortar locks onto the expo and gets two shots to begin damaging it down now Aaron's gonna go in with a rocket and as we head towards triple elixir time you can actually get a lot more aggressive with your offensive rockets you can see here that even though we don't have the rocket in cycle to defend the expo we have more than enough tanks and more than enough elixir to cycle 
and just continuously distract the expo while we just get chip damage on chip damage onto the tower. So you can see here, we're not even going to place an expo down. Uh, we're not even going to rocket down the expo. We're just going to go in with a knight there. Uh, again, defensive mortar comes down to distract. Fireball there gets pretty much no value uh, aside from taking down those archers. And again, log gets chip damage. 50 seconds left, and we're not even spending any rockets onto the expo. I believe he might he might rocket here. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but no, he actually see he just doubles down, goes in with a defensive mortar there. And cycles back to a second knight right at the bridge, followed up by some archers. You can see here that, you know, in Triple Elixir, again, you don't even have to spend rockets onto the expo. And then a second rocket comes down onto the tower. Tower was within two rocket range, now within one. So all he has to do is cycle back to that last rocket. That's a GG well played. Taking down expo, not too big of a deal. So there we go guys, as you can see, a couple of matches that pushed Aaron up to number three in the entire world with 2.9 mortar cycle. I'm actually super excited to see how the rest of his season plays out. Obviously he's doing absolutely amazing right now. Again, go ahead and check Aaron out on his YouTube and Twitter. I'll link them down below. But unfortunately guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. Huge thanks to all of my channel members. You guys are the absolute G's. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Array, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.